This video is about stainless steels and uh, I'm going to show you what the differences and similarities in uh, North American and European designations are between these uh, stainless steels so uh, you can choose a suitable material for your project because not all stainless steels are equal actually they are vastly different first off just briefly stainless steels are steels and that means that they all contain iron and they all contain carbon and the amounts they contain is prescribed and regulated manufacturers are not at liberty to make anything and market it as stainless steel by definition it is only stainless if it contains at least ten and a half percent chromium and that's by weight in uh, North American standards stainless steels in both uh, set of uh, standards are either uh, have uh, austenitic crystal structure or martensitic crystal structure these are or duplex which means a mix of the above two these crystal lattice structures are similar to the crystal structures water takes when it freezes it can be just ice or it can be snowflake and snowflakes are all different they can be uh, hexagonal they can be needle like so uh, and those different snowflakes have different crystal lattice structure so can steel have different crystal lattice structures so and uh, some of the other elements that are added to stainless steel come on over to the periodic table here some of the other elements so here is carbon here is iron most often chromium nickel and vanadium are the ones that are added to stainless steels and uh, two of the bad guys that are always specified are phosphorus and sulfur because they just make uh, things worse and make stainless steel or any steel weaker so come on over here to the designations and I'll show you I'm gonna show you an example on uh, knives. So my wife uh, bought a set of uh, knives, and this was uh, sold as a X39 knife, and it also has those numbers C or 13 on it. You can see the steel name in the European designation, and you can see the North American designation on it. So X39 is the same as 420 and on this other sheet which I'm gonna show you this way a 420 there we go a 420 steel uh, has a martensite as a crystal st crystal structure so this is a magnetic knife it sticks to a magnet and uh, it's got 13 percent chromium in it and uh, zero percent nickel that, that's, the, that's the amount for the nickel and it's also sold as a it's also sold as a 13 O knife. Uh, the 13 being the chromium content and the O, the zero is being the nickel content. So this is sometimes knives and uh, cutlery items are marked that it's made of uh, 13 O steel. These steels are stiff and they rust easier than the austenitic ones. So uh, you have to take uh, good care of these knives. For example, Swiss Army knife blades are made out of uh, this kind of steel. 440A is pretty much uh, the closest uh, that I can find for anybody. And uh, that's what its chemical composition is. And uh, you have to take good care of those knives. Another, se uh, another set of knives are typically uh, marketed as 1810 knives. You can see uh, in North American designation for steel 304, uh, there is the 18% chromium, there's the 10% nickel on average, and uh, this kind of knife is uh, flexible like this. has a flexible blade, uh, unlike the Swiss Army knife, which has a rigid blade and uh, I have a small bracket here to show this is also uh, 304 steel and it's absolutely not magnetic so if you're planning to hang it 
on a knife holder that has a, uh, that has a magnet on it, it's not gonna work because uh, 18 tons steels are austenitic for the crystal structure, and austenite is non-magnetic. That's what I wanted to show you about these steels, so uh, you have a better idea what to expect uh, when it comes to uh, steel items and cutlery. Oh, one more thing: many of the st many of the sinks, kitchen sinks and industrial kitchen equipment is made out of uh, 304 or 316 steel uh, if it's marketed that way you can find uh, the European equivalent uh, there on the other sheet and uh, likewise they are extremely uh, rust resistant and chemical resistant uh, soft, fairly soft so you can't really make a knife out of them that uh, holds an edge without special, uh, like this one, without special serration because the serration is uh, doing the cutting action on this knife because the edge really doesn't hold that well. So uh, don't try to make a chisel out of austenitic steel because it won't work very well for you, it won't last. You're going to have to resharpen it all the time. So those are the basic ideas that I want to share with regards to stainless steels.